To pave the road to our future, we must first resolve our past. Te mana o Ngāti Rangitihi's journey towards a Treaty of Waitangi settlement with the Crown has allowed us to deeper understand the plight of our ancestors. Building a comprehensive historical account is a pivotal first step in the deed of settlement. Historian Anthony Olsen has had a leading role in recounting our story. It is this historical account that will be included in the final deed of settlement. I've been incredibly humbled by the fact that Ngāti Rangiti beneficiaries have allowed me to run Whakapapa Wānanga, talking about Ngāti Rangiti history, uh, their ancestors, uh, how they connect to their ancestors, uh, and a lot of the corridor or the, or the uh, site history uh, that's been lost over the years. The full historical account will cover a comprehensive list of issues. Pre-treaty contact, 1860s war and confiscation, introduction of the native land court, crown purchasing, Mount Tarawera eruption, 20th century land administration, public works. Among the most crucial points, the inception of the native land court was fraught for Ngāti Rangitihi. Uh, many times the, the uh, court times um, and the hearings were posted in Rotorua. Um, it was simply a piece of paper on a door at the courthouse. Uh, Ngāti Rangitihi people were living in Matata they would have had to have someone at the courthouse able to actually see the time and date of the hearings in which land blocks were being heard uh, for them to be able to participate. And there are situations, and you see that in the court minutes, where uh, the, the judge will say, where are certain people? And some of those certain people are Ngāti Rangiti people who had actually indicated that they wished to be heard at the hearings but simply weren't in a position to be able to receive notice in time. Once the historical account is accepted, the Crown Acknowledgement is designed as a reconciliation tool to repair the relationship between the government and iwi. A Crown Acknowledgement is an acknowledgement by the Crown that decisions that they made historically were made in error. And those acknowledgements can be, for example, where the Crown took advantage of a particular situation. In this case, when Ruawahia was given solely to Ngāti Rangiti beneficiaries, uh, at the time, um, it was not long after the mountain had erupted, and a lot of our people were starving um, and without shelter. The Crown agents utilised that situation to actually buy shares in that block off Ngāti Rangitihi beneficiaries at a very low amount. The Crown now accept that uh, that was something that they shouldn't have done, that it was, it was an advantage that they took. There are more modern examples covered as well. The pollution of the Tarawera River in the 1950s and the Public Works Act seizure of land between Matata and Edgecombe from the 70s. To many iwi, receiving a Crown apology holds special significance. When the Crown makes an apology, it's apologising for historic acts and omissions of the Crown in breach of the Treaty of Waitangi. Acknowledging and apologising for the grief and resentment caused by these acts are needed to help heal old wounds like the suffering after the eruption of Mount Tarawera in 1886. There were certain acts that the Crown have committed over the years that are relatively generic to all tribes. Things like public works takings, things like um, utilising Crown purchase agents, land purchase agents, um, uh, to the advantage of the Crown. Uh, in Ngāti Rangiti situation post the eruption of Mount Tarawera, was ignoring pleas by the survivors uh, for support from the Crown. Ngāti Rangitihi chiefs wrote uh, on numerous occasions to the Crown post-eruption saying, not only are our people starving, 
but they do not have land in which to live uh, safely. And we are asking you and pleading with you to actually support us. There were odd times that the Crown responded in some way, but generally uh, the Crown actually ignored the pleas of Ngāti Rangiti. The Crown in these days, in contemporary times, acknowledged that um, that was wrong of them. They should have supported Ngāti Rangiti beneficiaries and that there will be a range of apologies around things like that uh, that will actually be, con be contained in the deed. Significantly, for the first time, the Crown is acknowledging the pollution of the Tarawera Awa. The Tarawera River is incredibly important to Ngāti Rangitihi. Uh, historically, as being the lifeblood of the iwi, so in spiritual terms, I'm talking about it from that perspective. In, in more contemporary terms, so in the early 1900s, it was incredibly important because it um, provided uh, a food source, um, both historically and at that time. So that connection that the beneficiaries of Ngāti Rangiti consider that as long as the river stays polluted, then that lifeblood that runs in their veins is also polluted. Therefore, they have a real need to actually have the river um, cleaned up. All these steps lead to the eventual deed of settlement, the final resolution document between Ngāti Rangitihi and the Crown. Historians have spent numerous years compiling the historical account through research, hui, and many discussions with Fano, and continue to do so. When you're in a room with um, 40, 50 other Ngāti Rangitihi, and everyone's there for a single purpose, and that's to support each other, I don't think you can get anything better than that. During the AIP process, we, we've had to do a lot of research. We've had, we've had to, if you like, tell the Ngāti Rangitihi story. And that, that story is now available, it's documented, it's archived, and it's a valuable resource to Ngāti Rangitihi today and Ngāti Rangitihi to come. And so we have learnt a lot about ourselves, our ancestral land, our whakapapa. And so that has been a real growth in us as a people in terms of better understanding who we are and therefore having more confidence about how we talk about ourselves.